Hi and welcome to the course. My name is Nikolai and I will be your instructor for this course. In this course you will start as a beginner with no previous knowledge about Wi-Fi hacking and Kali Linux. My goal is to keep the lecture short so that you can go through them quickly. Now let's talk about some of the topics that I will cover during the course. In the first part I'm going to teach you a basic understanding of wireless networks and how they work. Then I'm going to show you some different wireless settings and how to install Kali Linux in VMware Player. And lastly you will learn some very useful Linux commands. Once done with that I will move to second part which is more advanced. So in this part you will learn how to perform a denial of service attack and find hidden networks. After that you will learn how to hack wireless networks using tools like Aircrack NG, Wireshark, Wi-Fi, Crunch, Cowpatty, Pirate, River and so on. Finally I'm going to teach you how to perform an evil twin attack. This course is for those who want a career in cyber security or also for someone who just simply wants to learn all the cool Wi-Fi hacking tricks. You also have to remember that all information exposed in this course has the goal to teach you the techniques used by hackers in order to avoid their attacks. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you a basic understanding of wireless networks. So what is a wireless network? It's the network set up by using radio signal frequency to communicate with other computers, just like cell phones and radios. Wireless networks makes life incredibly easy and give us such great mobility. It's also referred to as a Wi-Fi network or WLAN. In 1997 the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers created the first WLAN standard which is a set of technologies for wireless communication. For an easy understanding I made a simple table to show you a brief history of wireless standards. This table describes the Wi-Fi standards. To help you understand the evolution of Wi-Fi technology. As you can see there are five standards but you only need to remember the N and the AC because these are the most common standards in use today. Next is wireless signals. Wireless signals are electromagnetic waves traveling through the air. They are important because they can transfer information like audio, video, or voices, and so on. There are two types of Wi-Fi signal, 2.4 GHz, a lower frequency, this is the more common Wi-Fi technology in use today, and the 5 GHz, which is a higher frequency used by fewer devices and can achieve higher speeds. The range is also shorter, you will also need to know what is a wireless channel. For the 2.4 GHz band there are 14 channels. If you are building networks in the US you can only use channels 1 through 11. You can also use the 5 GHz frequency band which is much wider and has more channels. These channels do not overlap so you don't have to worry about picking non-standard channels like in the 2.4 band. Now that you know what channels and different bands are, you will need to know how to avoid radio interference. If you live in a populated area, your neighbor's Wi-Fi could interfere with yours. So change the default Wi-Fi channel and use 1, 6 and 11. These three channels have no frequency overlap. Interference can also come from other electronics, such as microwaves, cordless phones, tablets, and so on. The last topic I want to cover in this video is wireless antennas. 
Antennas are also key components of these radio communication systems. There are two types, omnidirectional and directional. An omnidirectional antenna sends a signal out equally in all directions. A directional antenna sends a signal out in one direction. Ok, so now that you have a basic theoretical understanding of wireless networks, we are ready to move on to my next video, where I will show you useful wireless settings. So, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this video I will cover some useful options for your wireless network. First of all you need to log in to your wireless router. But to get prompted with a login page, you need to know the IP address of the router. So click on the start menu and type CMD. Press enter. Next type IP config and look for default gateway. This will be your IP address for accessing the router. Now I will log into my router and show you some important settings. First thing you need to do is change default password because router manufacturers use the same username and password which is usually admin and the password admin. An easy way to find router passwords is by using routerpasswords.com. Here you have a huge database of different routers. Just select one and click find password. As you can see, this is a very effective way to find your username and password. Ok, so let's switch back to my router interface and go to the wireless tab. Here you have different options. You can select the wireless modes and use as client, client bridge, ad hoc, but leave it on AP. Next is network modes or standards, where you have B, G, N only and so on. The big thing right here are channels, because these channels can help you avoid interference. So I recommend using 1, 6 or 11. Next is your network name and broadcast, which is enabled. This means that I'm able to see the name of the access point when searching for wireless networks. Disable mode will make your wireless network invisible. The next important tab is wireless security. Here you have different security protocols, but always use WPA and avoid web encryption. I will use a simple password for testing. And the last tab I want to cover is MAC filter. This option will prevent clients from accessing your network. If you want to find your wireless MAC address, just open command prompt and type netsh wlan show interface. And here is your MAC address. Another cool trick is to find your wireless password. So type netsh wlan show profile and select your profile name. Mine is Kynet. And then type key equal clear and press enter. As you can see my password is revealed. So that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. In this tutorial I will show you the fastest way to set up a virtual lab to practice your wireless hacks using a virtual machine. A virtual machine allows you to play with another operating system without leaving your current operating system. You have several options of different virtual machines. But for this tutorial I will use VMware Player. So let's switch to my computer and download VMware. Now open up your browser and search for VMware Player. And click on the first link. And then select download for Windows. When the download has finished, open the file and install the program. After the installation has completed, you should see a new icon on your desktop. Double click on this shortcut and you will be brought to this little menu. To test all the wireless attacks, I have installed Kali Linux into VMware because it has all the tools that I'm going to use pre-installed. 
To download Kali Linux, go to the Kali site and select Download Kali Linux. Here we have different ISO files. Just click ISO and wait for the download to complete. I will click cancel because I have already downloaded. Next, open VMware and click on create a new virtual machine. And then look for your Kali ISO file. Click next and here select Linux Debian 864 bit. Click next and here you can give the name to your virtual machine and the location where your virtual machine will be installed. Click next and in here you have disk capacity but you can increase it. And the second option is fine so click next. And in here you can click the customize hardware button and change different settings. You can increase the memory and change the number of processor cores. When you are done just click close. Now I will click cancel because I have already created a virtual machine. So just select this Kali Linux from here and click play virtual machine. Now wait for a few seconds for the system to start. If you want to play with this virtual machine a little bit, feel free to explore. And just remember, anything you are doing here, it's never going to affect your host operating system. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this tutorial I will cover some really useful Linux commands. So, let's get started. First command is pwd, which displays the present working directory. ls, list directory contents. cd is the change directory command. History prints the history. Man displays the online manual for a given command. Clear clears the screen. mkdir to make a directory. cp copy. grep displays the matching lines alias create a shortcut to a command, touch to create a new file, apt advanced package tool is used to install and remove different programs, ifconfig in short interface configuration, iwconfig is similar to ifconfig but is dedicated to wireless interfaces, locate find files by name, and nano which is a command line text editor. So let's see these commands in action. Open a terminal by clicking on the terminal icon. It's important to keep in mind that unlike Windows, Linux is case sensitive. This means that ls is different from ls. Use pwd to print the working directory. The directory you are in is root in this case. So, use cd command to move to a different location by typing cd slash bin. Enter pwd command again and you are in the bin directory. If you want to see the contents of directory you are in, use ls command or ls with option l. This will show you the size, date, permission and owner of file. To go back to your root folder, just type cd and to make a directory use mkdir and type the name of your directory to remove a directory use rm command with option r you can use man to display the manual of a specific command and a very handy command to clear your screen is clear if you want to install or remove a program use up to get command to install type up to get install and the name of the program and to remove type up to get remove. Use tab key for auto completion. Touch command is the easiest way to create a file. Type touch and the name of the file. CP is used to make copies of files and directories. Type CP and the name of your file and then the destination. Grep is a powerful command which looks for the pattern of the text that you specify on the command line. Let's say you want to find every line which contains the string password in this word list file. Type grep password word list. 
alias command can be useful if you want to create a shortcut to a command. Type alias name equal and the command. This will create an alias called cls, which will use the clear command. History command can be used to list commands you have typed. To delete all history, use C option. Locate command is the simplest way to find the location of files on Linux. Just type locate and the name of the file. And here is a list of places where the file is located. ifconfig stands for interface configuration. It is used to view and change the configuration of the network interfaces. To view the configuration of a specific interface, type its name here. You can see the IP address and the MAC address. IWconfig is used to display the wireless interfaces on your system. Nano is a small and friendly text editor. Just type nano and the path of the file. Nano will follow the path and open that file. Use Ctrl plus O to write and press enter to save changes. To exit, press Ctrl plus X. So, that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this video I'm going to explain you what is Aircrack NG packet injection and how to put your wireless card into monitor mode. First of all, Aircrack NG is not a single tool, but rather a suite of tools for manipulating and cracking Wi-Fi networks. The NG stands for new generation. During the course we will cover these tools. Now let's see what is packet injection. Packet injection allows to intercept and manipulate network communication. A good example is sending the out packets to a network client and disconnecting him from the router. To really be effective at wireless hacking, you need a wireless adapter that is capable of packet injection and monitor mode. The best supported and recommended USB wireless adapter for Kali Linux is Alpha AWUS036. This adapter has good sensitivity and can find hotspots that are far or weak in signal strength. To test my Wi-Fi adapter for packet injection, I will switch to my Kali machine and type the following command. Airplay NG-9 and the name of my wireless interface. As you can see my injection is working. Now let's put my wireless card into monitor mode using the following command. Airmon NG start WLAN 0. And here you will see some processes that could cause trouble. Use Airmon NG check kill. This command will stop all the interfering processes. To check that your interface is in monitor mode, you can use iwconfig. This mode will sniff the packets in the air without connecting with any access point, which means that my wireless card can hook up with anyone. So that's it for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to find hidden SSID networks around you. First you need to put your wireless card into monitor mode using Airmon NG. Now type Aerodump NG WLAN 0 Mon to list the wireless networks around you. Any wireless network that is hidden should show up as the name length. Once you found the network that you are looking to find the hidden SSID, use Ctrl plus C to stop the scan. So this one right here is my network and you can see that the SSID is hidden. Now I will need a few details about my network, like its MAC address and the channel that it's using. So go ahead and type the following command. Aerodump NG channel 6 and the BSSID of the network you are targeting. 
In order to bypass the hidden SSID, you need to wait for a client to connect to the access point. But waiting for a client to connect can take hours, even days. So a better way is to force clients to disconnect and reconnect using the following command airplay ng-0 and the number of packets and then the BSSID of the access point you are targeting. Once a client tries to connect to the access point, they exchange probe request and probe response packets. These packets contain the SSID of the access point. As these packets are not encrypted, they can be very easily sniffed from the air and the SSID can be found. So that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to spoof your MAC address. But to understand how MAC spoofing works, you need to know what a MAC address is. A MAC address is also called a media access control and it is a unique ID number that is given to your network adapter. In simple terms is a serial number and it cannot be changed forever. MAC spoofing is a technique for changing the MAC address that your network interface appears to have. This change is temporary and cannot be permanently. Now why would you want to spoof a MAC address? There are places where you go get the Wi-Fi password but can't access the network because they activated MAC filtering. So spoofing your MAC address can help you access the network. There are also companies which track users by recording the MAC addresses. So spoofing can save you from that as well. For Kali Linux there is a built-in program called MAC Changer, which I will demonstrate. So before you change your MAC address using MAC Changer, it's always a good idea to bring your network adapter down. This can be done using the following command ifconfig wlan0 down and now in one single line type macchanger-r wlan0 now this r here is just going to say give me any random mac address as shown on the screen macchanger will show you the current permanent and changed mac address the permanent MAC address will be restored to your network adapter after a reboot. You can also spoof a specific MAC address using the following command. MACchanger-m and here type your new MAC address. Now use the following command to bring up your network adapter. ifconfig wlan0 up. And to check your new Mac, just type ifconfig wlan0. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can sniff usernames, passwords and web pages using Wireshark, also known as a network sniffer. A network sniffer is a tool that can help you locate network problems by allowing you to capture and view the packets on your network. Wireshark is available for free at Wireshark website and you can download for Windows, Linux and other platforms. But for this tutorial I will use Wireshark from my Windows machine. If you want to start Wireshark on Kali Linux, just open a terminal and type Wireshark and wait a few seconds. The protocols that we'll be analyzing are FTP and HTTP. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol and HTTP for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So let's get started. Wireshark is really easy to use actually. All you have to do first of all is tell it which interfaces you want to capture. So I will go up here and click Capture options and interfaces and then I have to pick the correct interface which I want to use so I'm going to select it and press start and now I will start capturing traffic on that interface 
Now, let's say I want to connect to an FTP server on the internet. So I will open up a FileZilla connection to my web host and click quick connect. Now it's connecting to my web host online using my username and password, which is FTP password 88. So I will stop the capture and close my connection. And let's take a look at what we have. So here is the capture package. As you can see, it's a ton of information, but FTP is the protocol I'm interested in. And you can see right here, user FrostWeb, and then the password, which is FTP password 88. If you follow the TCP stream, you can see the username and password. Now I'm going to show you how to obtain the username and password from an HTTP site. So once again, click Capture, Interfaces and click Start. Then you want to go to the site you are trying to steal the login information and type in the username and password. I will put in test user and password just let me in. Now I will switch back to Wireshark and stop the capture. You also need to change the filter to HTTP request method equal equal and in caps post. This is just going to make the packet easier to find. When you locate the packet, again use left click and select follow TCP stream. As you can see, here is the user login and the password. So, since packet sniffing is so simple, it is important to know how to protect against it. If you have to put any important information, make sure the site uses HTTPS, which is a secure protocol. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi and welcome. In this video I'm going to teach you how to perform a denial of service attack on a wireless access point. First of all, let's understand what is a denial of service attack. It's an attack meant to shut down a system or server by denying users to access a service or website. So I will switch to my Kali machine and put my wireless card into monitor mode using the following command airmon ng star wlan 0 now i want to scan all the access points in range using arrow dump ng wlan 0 mon to stop the scanning use control plus c and then select your network mine is skynet so i'm going to need the mac address of the access point and the channel then type aerodump ng channel 6 and the BSS ID of the router. This will show you the clients that are connected to the access point. Now I will perform the actual attack with airplay ng dash 0 and the number of packets and dash a and then the MAC address of the access point. Now press enter. This attack will disconnect everyone from the network. So I will switch to my Windows machine and as you can see in my taskbar shows that I am connected. And you can see now that I have lost my connection. If you want to have a little more fun, you could create fake routers that basically floods your options when you search for a network to connect. First, I'm going to flood my local area with random fake wireless routers. So, I'm going to use MDK WLAN 0 MON, B which is a beacon flood, and use channel 5 by dash C and press enter. And if you look, it's flooding with these fake names right here. Now, to show that it's working, I'm going to click on my wireless taskbar. And you can see it's showing these random wireless networks. You can also change the names for the routers by using a simple file with some names. So after the dash C type dash F, which means the computer is going to use a file to generate these names instead of random characters. So I'm going to drag and drop the file in here and press enter. 
Now again, I'm gonna go to my taskbar and show you that it's working. But if someone tries to connect to these networks, it's not going to work. Because the purpose of this is just to flood your options. So, that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to crack WPA encryption. WPA stands for Wireless Protected Access and was designed to replace the web encryption. These security protocols are designed by the Wi-Fi aliens to secure wireless networks. So let's start the cracking process. First of all, make sure that your wireless card is in monitor mode. Then type Eurodump NG WLAN 0 MON to scan the wireless networks. And select your network. Mine is this one right here. So go ahead and type Eurodump NG and the channel of the access point. And the name of the file. And then the BSS ID of the access point. So up to this point we are pretty much the same as cracking web, except I'm not looking for the data here to climb. I just want here in this corner a four-way handshake. The four-way handshake contains the hash of the WPA access point, which I will use to crack the password. You can only capture the four-way handshake when a device connects or reconnects to the network. So I'm going to kick off this computer right here and when it reconnects to the access point it's going to give me the four-way handshake. Now go ahead and type airplay ng-0 and the number of packets and then the BSS ID of the access point. And on the top right corner you can see WPA handshake. Now you can stop this and clear the screen. And then type ls to list the files. And now I will use this WPA01 cap file with aircrack ng and brute forcing the password with a word list. As you can see I have a word list right here on my desktop. So let's crack the password by typing aircrack ng and the name of the word list. And then the name of the file, which is WPA01CAP in my case. And press enter. So, as you can see the key was found. And there is the password. Please note that this is a dictionary attack. If your password is not in the dictionary, the attack will fail. You also need to remember that this cracking process can be very time consuming when the password is not found in your word list. So that's it for this lesson, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome back, in this tutorial you will learn how to use crunch with aircrack ng. Crunch is an easy to use tool for generating a custom dictionary or word list. This tool can save you hours or days in password cracking. So in your terminal type crunch. Now let's say the target has a password of 8 characters and ends with the number 68. So go ahead and type crunch 88 which are the mean and the max numbers, dash t option and dash o for output and then the location and name of your word list file. As you can see on my desktop the word list pass has been created. You can open the file and you can see that every word ends with the number 68. I forgot to mention that these symbols here will insert lowercase characters. You can check the manual page by typing man crunch and scroll down and then look for the symbols. But I will leave this for you to read. Now let's say you want to make a word list using more characters. So type crunch. 816 ABCD 1988 Tor and you can see the numbers are stunning but don't worry because I will show you how you can pass all the passwords that are generated here so I will use the pipe option with the following command now all the passwords that are generated here will be placed straight into the air crack 
and will be used for the cracking process. So you don't need to use a word list because you will use the input from crunch. This method will save you a lot of time and valuable drive space. So that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome. In this video I will show you how you can speed up the WPA cracking process using Cowpatty Engine PMK. Cowpatty supports using a pre-computed hash file. Pre-computed hash files are used to accelerate the cracking process by eliminating the transformation of a password into an encryption key. So I will switch to my Kali machine and type Cowpatty. And here you can see different options. First of all make sure you have a capture file with the 4-way handshake and the word list to start the cracking process. So I will first show you how you can do the attack with a dictionary file, the same way I did with aircrack. So go ahead and type cowpatty-f and your dictionary file and dash r for the packet capture file and then dash s for the ssid. As you can see cowpatty is generating a hash of every word from my word list. When the hashes match, it displays the password of the access point. This process is very CPU intensive and slow. So I'm going to skip ahead here. And you can see it takes almost 5 minutes to crack the password. But the way that will speed this up is to create your own hashes by using a tool called GenPMK. This tool is very useful when you don't have any client connected to the access point, but you want to start generating the hashes for the SSID you are targeting. Now go ahead and type genpmk-f and your dictionary file and dash d for output file, which is going to be hash and then dash s for the SSID which I want to create the pre-generated hashes. Now it's creating pre-generated hashes for the network. So again I will skip ahead. And now whenever I want to attack the network I will use the hash file. Which is this one right here. So go ahead and type cowpatty-d for the hash file. And dash r for the packet capture. And then dash s for the ssid. And as you can see it took less than a second to crack the same password. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to use Pirate. Pirate is a tool that uses all the cores in your system to help speed up the cracking process. Now if you want to see how many cores you have just type pirate list underscore cores. First make sure you have a capture file and the word list. And then type pirate dash r and your capture file. And dash i and the word list. And then attack pass through. This method is much faster compared to aircrack. Because with aircrack is only going to use one core. Now let's see a much faster method. So go ahead and type pirate-i and your password list. And then import passwords. And now it's going to import all the passwords from the file into the pirate database. Next you need to add the SSID of the network. Using pirate-e and the name of your network. And then create ESSID. Now type pirate eval to get an overview of everything. And you can see the SSID and the passwords. So go ahead and type pirate batch to start processing those passwords. This process can take some time depending on how big is your dictionary file. Ok so once it's done batch processing you can launch the tag by typing pirate dash r for the capture file and then attack db. This is by far the fastest method. And lastly if you feel like you want to clean up your database, type pirate-e 
Skynet delete ESS ID. And to delete all the passwords from database, type rm-rf.pirate blob space password. And now I have zero passwords and no networks. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to perform an evil twin attack. An evil twin is a rogue or fake wireless access point that appears as a genuine hotspot. The idea is to set up your own network that looks exactly like the one you are attacking. So let's get started. First step as always is to make sure you have your wireless adapter into monitor mode. And then scan all the wireless access points in your range using AeroDump NG and the name of your interface. Now you need to find the access point you want to clone. Mine is Skynet. So I'm going to use Airbase NG, which is a tool used to convert your wireless card into an access point. So go ahead and type in the following. Airbase NG A and the MAC address of the access point you want to clone. Dash E for the name of the network. And channel 6. And then the interface WLAN 0 mon. Now the fake access point is running. Next step is forcing the client to disconnect from the real access point and connecting to your fake access point using the following command. Airplay ng dash zero zero dash a and the MAC address of the real access point. Now if my signal is stronger, he will automatically reconnect to my evil twin. As you can see, a client has connected to my fake access point. Ok, so now I need to provide internet access to the fake access point. And to do this, you just have to know which interface is providing you with internet. Mine is ETH0. First of all, you will need bridge utils. So go ahead and type up to get install bridge utils. And after the installation has completed, type brctl add br fake. You can name it any way you like. In my case I have named it fake, but it doesn't really matter. Next type brctl add if fake eth0. This will create a bridge between fake and eth0, which has internet access. You also need to add the interface which is created by Airbase NG. So use the same command, just change the name of the interface to AT0. This interface should be the same on your system, because Airbase NG will create this interface for you. Next step is to add IP addresses to these interfaces and bring them up. So go ahead and type ifconfig AT0 up and then ifconfig fake up. And finally the evil twin attack is complete. The client is now connected to your fake network and can use the internet. Now all the packets that go from the user to the internet pass through your interface. And these packets can be monitored with Wireshark. So in your terminal type Wireshark and wait a few seconds. And then go up here and click capture and select the interface you have created. In my case is this one right here called fake. And press start. And now you can listen to all the wireless traffic on fake interface. So have fun and thanks for watching. Hi and welcome to the course where you will learn practical evil twin attacks with captive portals. So let's go ahead and see what I'm going to cover in the course. So in the first part you will learn how to set up a fake access point with a captive portal web page and capture the login information from victims. Then I will show you how to clone the web page from the original access point and steal sensitive information. 
and then I will show you how to combine the social engineering toolkit and the B framework to perform an evil twin attack. Once done with that, I will move to a different part where I will show you useful Wireshark filters and how to use tools like Ergeddon and VV Pumpkin to automate the process. And then you will learn how to create a fake access point which has a malicious captive portal with social media connectivity to steal the login credentials. And lastly, you will learn how to detect evil twin attacks and how to secure your system. Now, I also want to remind you that the course is designed for users who have already been exposed to Wi-Fi penetration testing. So, if you are a complete beginner in this field, please watch my Wi-Fi hacking for beginners course. Okay, now by the end of the course you will have a strong knowledge on how to perform and detect evil twin attacks and you will know various tools and techniques used by hackers. So thanks for watching and I will see you inside the course. Hi and welcome. In this video I'm going to teach you the basics of the evil twin attack. So first off let's see what is an evil twin. An evil twin is a fake wireless network that appears as a genuine hotspot. The idea is to set up a malicious wireless network with the same name as the original one. Basically, you are making a clone of the wireless network which you want to attack. Now, devices connected to a Wi-Fi network have no way to distinguish between two Wi-Fi networks with the same SSID name. This enables hackers to set up a fake wireless network that can capture the traffic and extract personal information from the victims. Ok, now let's see the anatomy of the evil twin attack. So first off the attacker scans the air for the target access point information like SSID name, channel number and MAC address. He then uses that information to create a malicious wireless network with the same characteristics. Now, clients on the legitimate access point are repeatedly disconnected, forcing them to connect to the malicious access point. As soon as the client is connected to the fake wireless network, he may start browsing the internet, and he will see a web login page saying, please log in to access the internet. Now, if the client enters the password, he will be redirected to a login page, and the password will be stored in the database of the attacker machine. So, this is how the evil twin attack works behind the scene. Ok, now let's learn about captive portals, which are often used in evil twin attacks. So, a captive portal is a web page that is displayed to newly connected users of a Wi-Fi network. Captive portals are used by business centers, airports, coffee shops and other places that offer free Wi-Fi for internet users. Users can freely connect to these networks and they will often be directed to a login page where a password is required before accessing the internet. The danger in using this type of networks is that an attacker can create a clone of the wireless network with the same login page and tricking users to connect to the fake wireless network. So if this happens, then the attacker can capture sensitive information using tools like Wireshark. So, that's it for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ok, so welcome back. In this tutorial you will learn which wireless adapter you should buy for wireless penetration testing. So, to hack a Wi-Fi network you need a wireless card which supports monitor mode and packet injection. Now, for those who don't know, monitor mode allows you to capture data sent and received by wireless devices. And packet injection allows you to inject malicious packets into a network. Now, the first step before you buy a wireless adapter is to identify the chipset for the wireless card. And here you can see a list of the chipsets that supports monitor mode and packet injection. So, make sure the adapter which you want to buy contains a compatible chipset. Ok, now let's see how to test the wireless card for monitor mode and packet injection. And to do that I'm going to switch to my Kali Linux machine and open the terminal. 
Now, if you are a complete beginner and you don't know how to install Kali Linux, watch my Wi-Fi Hacking for Beginners course. So here in the terminal, type iwconfig to display all the wireless interfaces on your system. And you can see the wireless interface name is WLAN0. Now let's put the wireless card into monitor mode. By typing Airmon ng start WLAN0. And then type iwconfig again. And you should see a new interface name WLAN0mon with the mode monitor. This means the card has been successfully put into monitor mode. Ok, now let's test the wireless card for packet injection. And to do that type airplay ng dash dash test wlan 0 mon and press enter to start the test. And you can see the injection is working. And here on the last line the percentage should be 100 or a very high percentage. And if the number is 0 then it means that your wireless card does not support injection. So, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so in this lesson I'm going to show you how to sniff and inject packets into a wireless network. So first off I need to scan all the wireless networks around me. And to do that I will type aerodump ng which is a packet sniffer program. And the monitor mode wireless interface WLAN0 mon. And press enter to start the scanning. And here you can see useful information from all the wireless networks around me, like the MAC address, channel number, encryption type and network name. Now to stop the scanning process, use Ctrl plus C. Ok, so let's see how to sniff packets from a specific network. And in my case the target network is Skynet. Also make sure you are doing this test on your own network. So let's get started by typing the following command aerodump ng dash dash bssid and copy the MAC address from the target network and paste it here. Then you need to specify the channel using dash c and the channel number which is 6. Now the next step is to type dash w for write and put the file name. This is the file where all the data will be saved and in my case I will type capture. And lastly put the wireless interface WLAN0 mon and press enter. This will start capturing all the packets from the wireless network in a file called capture01.cap. So to find the file I will open a new tab and type ls. And here you can see the capture01.cap file. Ok, now let's see how to inject packets into the target network. So to do that I'm going to type the following command. Airplay ng dash dash dout for the authentication attack. And put the number of packets which you want to send. And for this example I will use 10. And then type dash a and put the MAC address for the target network. And the wireless interface wlan 0 mon. Ok, now let's analyze the file to see if I have successfully injected those packets. So I will type Wireshark and the capture file name and press enter. And now I'm going to look for the authentication packets which you can see here. These packets will disconnect all the clients from the wireless network. So that's it for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi, in this video I will show you how to create an access point on Linux. Now the first thing you need to do is to install DNS mask and host apd by typing apt install DNS mask and host apd in the terminal and press enter. Then you need to stop all the interfering processes using airmon ng check kill. Ok, so the next step is to create the configuration files for the DNS mask and host apd. And in my case I already created the files in the home directory. 
So if I use ls, you can see the DNS mask config file and host apd. Okay, now let's understand how these files work. So I will type nano, which is a text editor, and put the name for the config file. And here in the first line, you need to put the name for your wireless interface, which you can easily find using iwconfig command. And the next line will set the IP range for the clients. So when clients connect to your access point, the DHCP server will give them an IP address. And then you have the gateway IP address, in other words, the router, and the DNS server, which is used to translate domain names into IP addresses. Okay, now let's close this file using Ctrl plus X and open the host apd config file using nano and the name of the file. And here we'll see some very simple settings. And the first line is the wireless interface WLAN 0. And the second is the wireless network name, which you can change it to whatever you want. And then you have to put the channel number and the driver. And to save the file, use Ctrl plus O to write, enter, and Ctrl plus X to exit. Okay, so at this point you can start the access point using the following commands. DNS mask C and put the location for the configuration file and press enter. And now the DNS and DHCP server is running in the background. Once done with that, type host apd and put the location for the configuration file and press enter. And you can see the test Wi-Fi network has been started. Ok, now let's go to a Windows machine and see if the wireless network is visible. And here on my taskbar you can see the test Wi-Fi network. Ok, so let's go back to the Kali machine and show you another simple method on how to create an access point. And this time I'm going to use a tool from Aircrack called Airbase NG. So in the terminal type Airbase NG E and put the wireless network name. Then you need to set the channel using dash C and put the channel number and the wireless interface WLAN 0 and press enter and now the access point is up and running so that's it for now thanks for watching and i will see you next time okay so in this video i'm going to teach you how to enable a captive portal login page on your access point so first off, I will open the DNS mask config file using nano and the name of the file. And here on the last line, I have added the IP address for the login page. Basically, this will redirect any request from the web browser to this IP address when clients connect to the access point. So I'll close this and open the host apd config file using nano and put host apd.com. And here I will only change the wireless network name to free Wi-Fi and save the file. Ok, now I will start DNS mask using DNS mask C and put the location for the configuration file. And then start host apd by typing host apd and put the configuration file. And I will also add dash b to run the command in the background. This is useful if you don't want to open a new terminal. And now I need to add the IP address for the WLAN 0 interface by typing ifconfig WLAN 0 and put 192.168.1.1 slash 24 and press enter. Now the next thing is to set up the login page for the access point and in my case I have saved the files in the home directory. So to find the files, I will click on the file manager and here I have a folder called basic portal. So I will open the folder and here are the files for the login page. Now let's see how the page looks like by clicking the index.html file. 
And here you can see a basic HTML login page, which will be used to appear when clients try to connect to the access point. Okay, now let's close this. And the next step is to copy the files to the web server directory. By going to other location, computer, var www.html and paste the files here. Okay, now the last thing you need to do is to modify the configuration file for the Apache web server and add the rewrite rules. So I already saved the rules in a file here in the home directory. And if I use ls, you can see the Apache rewrite file, which I will open using nano and the name of the file. Now here I'm not going to cover too deep about these rules. Basically these rules will make the redirection for a captive portal to work properly. So you need to copy this and type nano slash etc slash apache2 sites enabled 00 default.conf and under virtual host paste the code and don't forget to save the file. Once done with that, start the web server using service Apache 2 start. Okay, now let's switch to the Windows machine and test the free Wi-Fi network. So I will click connect. And you can see I have been automatically redirected to the login page. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so in this tutorial I will show you how to sniff login information from the captive portal. So first off make sure the access point is up and running. Then in the terminal type tshark and set the interface to WLAN 0. And use dash w to store the data in a file. So I'm going to put capture.cap for the file and press enter. And now I'm capturing packets on WLAN 0 interface in a file called capture.cap. Ok, now let's go to the Windows machine and connect to free Wi-Fi. And you can see when I connect to the access point, I automatically get directed to the login page. Now let's say I want to access a different web page. So I will open a new tab and type google.com. And you can see I've been redirected to the login page where I need to put the username and the password. So I will type John for the username and put let me pass in for the password. And click login. Ok, so let's go back to the Kali machine and stop the capturing process and open the capture file which is saved in the home directory. So if I use ls, you can see the capture.cap file. Now to open the file, type Wireshark and the name of the file. And here are the packets from the WLAN 0 interface, which I have captured using Tshark. Now the next step is to change the filter to HTTP and look for post request. And here is the HTTP post request. And if I go and click on HTML form, you can see the username and the password. So, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ok, so welcome back. In this lecture I will show you a different method on how to capture the username and the password from the victim using a PHP script. So first off I will change directory to slash var slash www slash html. This is the location for the Apache web server where the captive portal files are located. So if I use ls you can see all the files. Now here I have added two more files which is capture.txt and post.php. So let's open post.php using nano and the name of the file. And here is the PHP code. Basically this code will grab the username and the password from the login form and save it in a file called capture.txt, which I already created. So I'll close this and open index.html using nano and the file name. 
Now here on form name, go to action and type slash post.php. This is the PHP file which will be used to capture the login credentials from the victim. And don't forget to save the file. And then restart the web server using service Apache to restart. Ok, now let's go to the victim machine and connect to free Wi-Fi. And in the login form I will type John for the username and let me in for the password. And click login. Ok, so let's go back to the Kali machine and see if I've managed to capture the login information from the victim. So I will open the capture file using nano and put capture.txt and here you can see the username and the password. So that's it for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ok so welcome back, in this video I'm going to teach you how to create a fake captive portal and steal the login information using social engineering. So let's get started. And first off, I'm going to click on the wireless icon from the taskbar. And you can see I'm connected to airport free Wi-Fi. Now, let's say for example, when you connect to this wireless network, you are being redirected to this login page. So, let's pretend this is the original captive portal page, which is displayed to the users when they try to connect to the airport free Wi-Fi. Ok, now let's switch to the Kali machine and see how to create an access point with the same login page and similar name. And first I'm going to open host apd config file using nano and the file name. And change the name to airport free Wi-Fi version 2. And save the file. And then start the access point using host apd and put the location for the configuration file. And I'm also going to add dash B option. Ok, so the next thing is to create the exact same login page as the original one. So first I will change directory to slash var slash www slash html. And here I will type htrack. And now I need to put the link for the website which I want to clone. So I'll go back to the Windows machine and copy the login page link and paste it here and press enter. This process may take some time depending on how big is the website. Ok, so the next step is to capture the network traffic from the access point. And to do that I will type tshark and set the interface to WLAN0 and dash w and put the file name and in my case I will use capture ap and press enter ok now at this point you can use a deauthentication attack to kick all the users from the original access point and force them to connect to your fake access point so to do that I will open a new tab and type aerodump ng wlan1 mon this WLAN1 is another wireless adapter in monitor mode, which I have attached to the virtual machine. And press enter. And now you need to type airplay ng -00 -a and copy the MAC address from the original access point. And paste it here. And put the wireless interface. And press enter. And now the attack is running. So let's go to the victim machine and click on the wireless icon. And you can see I'm no longer connected to the network because the authentication attack is disconnecting all the users from the network. So the victim will think there is something wrong with the network and he may try to connect to the version 2. And he will be redirected to the fake login page which looks exactly as the original one. So let's say he will use Jack for the username and let me in for the password and tries to sign in. Ok, now let's go to the Kali machine and stop the capturing process using Ctrl plus C. 
And to find the login information, I'm going to type this nif p and the capture file name. And press enter. And here you can see the username Jack and the password let me in. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this lecture you will learn how to steal the login information using the social engineering toolkit. So first of all make sure DNS mask, host APD and Apache web server is running on your system. And then you will need to have the captive portal web page, which will be used to appear when clients try to connect to the access point. And in my case, I have the captive portal files here in the basic portal folder. So if I use ls, you can see the files. Okay, now let's start the social engineering toolkit by typing set toolkit. And here select social engineering attacks by typing number one. Now it will show you another set of options. So select second option website attack vectors and use the credential harvester attack method. And here I will select custom import. This option allows you to import your own website. Now in this step it will ask you for your IP address. So if you are using this attack with an access point, make sure you are using the IP address from your wireless interface, which you can easily find by typing ifconfig. And here on WLAN 0 is the IP address. So I will type 192.168.1.1. And now I need to enter the path for the captive portal files or website. So in my case is root slash basic portal and press enter. And here I will use the second option to copy the entire folder. And for the URL I will use the IP address for the login page and press enter. And now the credential harvester is running. So let's switch to the Windows machine and connect to the access point. And I'm going to type test for the username and set toolkit for the password and click the login button. Okay, now let's go back to the Kali machine. And here you can see the login credentials from the target. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so in this video I will show you how to use B framework with your captive portal web page to gain control over the target web browser. So first off make sure you have Beef installed on your system. And in my case I have Beef installed from GitHub. So here in the Beef directory I will type dot slash Beef to start the browser exploitation framework. Now here you can see the hook and the UI link. So in order to attack a browser you need to include the javascript hook URL in a web page. And the UI link is the web interface for the tool. So I will start the web interface by open the link. And here the username is beef and password beef. And on the left is the hook browsers panel. And I don't have any target hooked for the moment. So let's see how to hook a browser. And to do that I'll go back to the terminal and open a new tab. And change directory to slash var slash www slash html. This is the location for the Apache web server where I have the captive portal files. So I will list all the files using ls. And now I will open index.html using nano and the name of the file. And in the head section, you need to add the hook URL. So I will type script src equal and go to beef and copy the hook URL and paste it here. And close the script and save the file. Okay, so let's go to the victim machine and connect to the access point. And now the victim will be automatically directed to the login page which contains the malicious javascript hook URL. And to understand better I will use right click and select view page source. 
And in the head section, you can see the JavaScript hook, which is executed when the victim loads the web page. Okay, now let's switch to the Kali machine and go to Beef Control Panel. And here you can see a hooked browser with the IP address. So at this point, you can exploit the victim browser. And to give you an example, I will go to Comments and search for Alert. And select Create Alert. And I will type this is a fake network and click the execute button. Okay, now let's go to the victim machine. And here you can see the alert message has appeared. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so welcome back. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to set up a fake access point with internet access. So first of all, you need to install Bridge Utils by typing apt install Bridge Utils. And here you can see I already installed the program on my system. Okay, now the next step is to create the bridge interface. So in the terminal type brctl, add br and put the name for the bridge interface. And I will use br0. Next, type brctl, add if, br0, and put the interface which provides you with internet access. So, I will open a new tab and type ifconfig. And in my case, I have internet access from ETH0. So, I will type ETH0 here. This will create a bridge between br0 and ETH0. Once done with that, type ifconfig br0 up to bring the interface up. Okay, so the last step is to modify the host apd config file and add the bridge interface. So to do that, I will type nano host apd.conf and here under the wireless interface type bridge equal br0 and save the file. Okay, now I will start the access point using host apd and put the location for the configuration file and dash b to run the command in the background. Okay, so let's switch to the Windows machine and connect to the access point and open the web browser. And you can see I have internet access. So at this point, you can use a deauthentication attack to kick users from other networks and force them to connect to your fake access point. And to do that, I will go back to the Kali machine and this time I'm going to use a different tool called MDK. So I will type MDK WLAN 1 MON for the wireless interface, D for the authentication and dash C and put the channel number and press enter. Now this attack is very effective because we'll disconnect all devices operating on channel 1. So that's it for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so in this lesson you will learn how to use Wireshark filters when the victim connects to your fake access point. So first off you need to open Wireshark by typing Wireshark in the terminal. And here select wireless interface WLAN 0 and press start capturing packets. Okay, now let's switch to the victim machine and generate some traffic by going to an HTTP website and try to log in using test for the username and let me in for the password and click the login button. Okay, so let's go back to the Kali machine and stop the capturing process by clicking the red button. And now the first filter which I like to use is DNS with the IP address. So I will type DNS and IP add R equal equal and put the victim IP address. This filter will show you which websites the victim is visiting and is useful when you want to perform a phishing attack. Okay, now the next filter is frame contains and put the word from the website. And for this example, I will use Bing. This will show you if users from your fake access point are visiting Bing website. 
And lastly, let's see how to locate the post packet which contains the login credentials. So I will type HTTP request method equal equal and in caps post and click on the HTML form. And here you can see the username and the password. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so in this tutorial, I will show you some basic examples on how to customize the captive portal web page from Ergeddon. So let's get started. And first off, you need to go to the terminal and open a new tab and change directory to slash tmp slash www. This is the location where the captive portal files are located. So if I use ls, you can see the files, which you can modify or you can add your own captive portal files to trick the victim. Also, please remember that the files are automatically deleted when the attack has been stopped. So if you have a customized captive portal, make sure to keep a copy of your files. Okay, now let's see some examples on how you can change the captive portal. So I will open index.html using nano and the name of the file and go to the p tag and change the paragraph to this is a malicious web page and save the file. Okay, now let's modify the portal CSS file using nano and the name of the file. And here I will go to the content class and change the background color to a dark gray using a hex color code. And don't forget to save the file. Okay, so let's switch to the victim machine and connect to the fake wireless access point. And you can see the paragraph and the background color has been changed. So, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so welcome back. In this video you will learn how to steal the login information from an enterprise wireless network. Now, for those who don't know, WPA Enterprise is another form of authentication used in business environments, where users need to have a username and a password if they want to connect to the network. Okay, now let's see how to steal the login credentials from an enterprise network. So here on Ergeddon, select option 10, Enterprise Attacks menu, and press enter. And use option 6, Smooth Mode Enterprise Evil Twin. And press no to use the default certificate. Now here I will use the second option, the Out Airplay attack. This attack will disconnect everyone from the original access point. And type yes to enter information manually. And I assume by now you know how to find information about the target access point. So I'll put the BSS ID from the target. And now I need to provide the channel, which is 6. And type the network name. And I will use Enterprise Wi-Fi. And press Enter to use the default path for the capture file. Okay, now at this point the Evil Twin access point is running. So let's go to the victim machine and connect to the fake enterprise Wi-Fi network. And here I need to enter the username and the password if I want to connect. So for this example, I will use John for the username and test456 for the password. And click connect. Okay, now let's go back to the Kali machine and press enter in the terminal. And you can see a congratulations message and the location where the captured files were saved. So let's go to the specify location by open a new tab and change directory to slash root slash enterprise captured enterprise Wi-Fi. And here use the ls command and you will see a text file. So I will open the file using nano and the file name. And you can see the username John and the password test456. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.
Hi and welcome back. In this lesson you will learn how to steal the login information from victims using a malicious Wi-Fi captive portal with social media connectivity options. And to do that I'm going to use Roge Wi-Fi script. So let's download the script by scrolling up and click clone or download. And copy the GitHub link and go to the terminal and type git clone and paste the URL. Once done with that, change directory to the script folder. And now you will need to copy all the files from this directory to the Apache web server location. By typing cp-r and put the star wildcard. This star represents all files. And then type the location which is slash var slash www slash html. Ok, now let's change directory to slash var slash www slash html and see if I have successfully copied the files. And I will list the content of this directory using the ls command. And here you can see I have all the files. Ok, so at this point you can run the script by typing dot slash wifi dot sh and put the wireless interface wlan0. And the second interface which provides you with internet access. And in my case I have internet access from ETH0. So the second interface will be used to give internet access to the users when they have submitted the login credentials. And lastly type the access point name. And I will use free Wi-Fi. And press enter. And now the access point is running. So let's switch the Windows machine and connect to free Wi-Fi. And you can see I've been redirected to this nice web login interface where I need to log in using my social media account in order to gain internet access. So for this example, I will select Facebook and type jack at gmail.com for the email. And let me in for the password. And click login. Now the script is written to fail in the first attempt because most of the time users will try to enter fake information. So let's say the victim will try the second attempt and maybe he will use the real password. So for example this time he will use just let me in 456 for the password and try to log in again. And now the victim will have access to the internet. Ok, so let's go back to the Kali machine and stop the access point using Ctrl plus C and see if I have managed to capture the login information which should be saved in a text file called passwords. So I will list the files using ls and here is the password.txt file. So I will open the file using nano and the file name. And here you can see the first and the second password, the email address and the social network Facebook. So that's it for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ok, so welcome back. In this video I'm going to teach you how to use DNS spoofing to redirect users to your fake website. And to do that I'm going to use Wi-Fi Pumpkin Framework which you can download and install from this web page. So let's open the framework by going to the terminal and type wifi pumpkin. And here go to settings and you will see different options on how you can modify the access point. And in my case I will only change the SSID name to airport free Wi-Fi. And click start up here to start the access point. Ok, now the access point is up and running. So let's perform the DNS spoofing attack by going to modules and select DNS spoofer. And on the left box use right click and select add host. Now here you need to type the web address for the website which you want to spoof. So for this example I will use yahoo.com and click ok. Basically this attack will redirect yahoo.com to this IP address 10.0.0.1 .0 .0 .1, 
which can be a malicious website. Okay, so to launch the attack, click start attack. And now the DNS spoof is running. Okay, now you can also inject a malicious JavaScript code like the beef hook URL. And to do that, click on the phishing manager. And here enable beef by checking the box. And now I'll go to the terminal and go to beef, which I already started. And copy the hook URL and paste it here. And click start server. Okay, so let's switch to the victim machine and connect to airport free Wi-Fi. And open the web browser and type yahoo.com. And you can see I've been redirected to Wi-Fi Pumpkin web page, which contains the beef hook URL. Now, you can improve this attack by cloning the website from yahoo.com and put the files on your Apache web server. So, when users from your fake access point are trying to visit yahoo.com, they will be redirected to a fake Yahoo web page, which looks exactly as the original one. Okay, now I have also injected the hook URL from Beef, so let's switch back to the Kali machine and see if I have a hooked browser. And I will go to Beef control panel. And here you can see I have a hooked browser from yahoo.com. So that's it for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Hi and welcome back. In this lesson you will learn how to detect Wi-Fi attacks using Wireshark. Now for those who don't know Wireshark is available for free at wireshark.org and you can download for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Ok, now let's start capturing packets. So here select your wireless interface and click start capturing. Now, in most cases, the attacker who is performing the evil twin attack will try to disconnect users from the original access point. So, using Wireshark, you can detect the, the authentication packets. Okay, now let's go to the terminal and let's pretend the attacker will use the AirPlay the authentication command, which you can see here, and press enter. Ok, so let's go back to the Wireshark and stop the capturing process. And let's see only the deauthentication packets by typing the following filter. WLAN FC type subtype equal equal 12. And you can see all the deauthentication frames. So at this point you will know that someone is messing around with the wireless network. Now, you can check if the attacker is targeting your wireless router or the network where you are connected by using WLAN BSS ID equal equal and put the MAC address. And you can see someone is targeting this MAC address. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to protect your wireless network from evil twin attacks using Evil AP Defender. Now, I already downloaded the tool on my system, so let's go to the terminal and see how to start the tool. So first make sure you are in the Evil AP Defender folder. And here type dot slash Evil AP Defender dash L for learning mode. This option will scan all the wireless networks around you. Now you need to enter the username for MySQL, which is root, and put the password if you have one. Ok, so at this point you need to whitelist your wireless network by selecting the first option Autoconfig. And now you need to type the SSID name. And in my case, I'm going to whitelist the AP with the Wi-Fi name, which you can see here. So I will type Wi-Fi. Okay, now let's open a new tab and create a fake access point with the same name and MAC address. And to do that, I will type Airbase NG E Wi-Fi A and put the MAC address. 
and the wireless interface and press enter now let's go back to evil ap defender and use option 6 go into normal mode and press enter to discover evil access points around you and here you can see a fake access point has been detected so that's it for now thanks for watching and i will see you next time hi and welcome back in this lesson i am going to teach you how to protect your home network using guest wi-fi so if you don't know a guest wi-fi network is a different access point on your router and is a great way to give house guests access to the internet without sharing your main network also, this type of network will help you to protect the primary network from malicious files or malware to spread to the other computers on your main network. So basically when a smart home product gets hacked, the data available to the hacker will be limited to the guest network. So it's a good way to add another level of protection. Okay, now let's see how to set up a guest Wi-Fi. So I'll go to the Windows machine and in the address bar type tepelink.com slash us support emulator and scroll down and go to home routers and I'm going to select Archer A6. Now I'm using this web interface as an example for the Archer A6 router. So if you have a different router your web interface will be different. Okay, now I'll go to advance and click on guest network and here are the settings to set up the network. So all I have to do is check enable guest network and change the network name if I want to and click WPA to add the password and save the settings and now the guest network should be up and running. So. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.